Neurotransmission Journey. Neurotransmission Journey with Dr. Kathy Holloway introduces viewers to the simple self-care steps that address medical mysteries and restore healthy vitality. Decades of teaching the neuroscience of medical interventions to healthcare practitioners internationally and healing from her own brain injuries illuminate Dr. Kathy's grounded, logical approach to self-care and healing. So now, please welcome your host, Dr. Kathy Hallway. Well, hello and welcome to your neurotransmission journey. <laughs> They've got me saying it now, to your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. I'm Dr. Kathy Hallway, your host, and today we have a guest with us. And uh, Morgan, I'd like, I hope you're there. And um, I'd like to I'm introduce, here. okay, great. I'd like to introduce you to Morgan Born Aves, a mental health counselor, there he is, uh, who has experienced this powerful work uh, for himself and for his clients. We've been working together for about a year and a half. And um, we're here today to explore a different aspect of the uh, stress regulation process. I've mentioned before in uh, other episodes how it can be, stress can be triggered in us, not just from like the physical sensory experience of it, but also from story trauma. And so we are here today to explore that story process and story triggers. And, um, so what we've learned is that some very simple attentive techniques can uh, improve that the autonomic regulation can help us unclench to be present to navigate from what's true for us rather than old stories that were projected on us and um you know these stories and expectations that get projected on us uh kind of evolve into this insidious unconscious clench. <laughs> and if you're clenched and not breathing, ain't much, nothing else going to change much in how you land in yourself and meet the world. So let's go, Morgan. Tell, tell me what comes to mind when, you know, you hear this explanation of it. I mean, first of all, thank you so much for having me on here. It's just one of the greatest honors of my life to, be able to sit in this kind of a forum with you, you know, not only as somebody I've worked with, but as a peer, it's, uh, it's kind of like the highlight of my career, to be honest. Thank you. Thank so you. it was very interesting. As we started to do our work, I understood more and more why people would come in and they would feel better. And then they would leave the office and feel better for a certain amount of time, but they would always have to come back. Mm -hmm. And it, it was always a bit of a, a query to me. And as we worked together and we started to understand, I started to understand more about what was story attachment disorder and mm -hmm. what autonomics really truly were, what interoception was and how, oh, when they're in the room with me, I'm saying the logical thing that makes the most sense to them, that makes corroborating sense to the stories that they've heard out in the world of what is healing, what is health, whether it be physical and structural or emotional and how these things came to be and persisted over time, um, the logic seemed to really make people get into this state of, oh, rhythm. It was a body. And I was fascinated with it, um, but I didn't really understand it as it was happening now, understanding it from a bit of a different perspective of, how are the autonomics being reset? What are we tapping into when we're in true parasympathetic rhythm? Um, has been an unbelievable journey for, for me personally and my own stuff and, you know, and disorganization and also the people that I work with. And I've seen just an incredible amount of progress in a shorter amount of time utilizing these strategies hacked and uh, paired along with the psychotherapeutic type clinical techniques mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you know, gravitate towards and understand, um, because I don't think that people really understand what's happening within their own interception. Right. right. And, and that's, yep. that's the beauty. Yep. 
beautiful. And I, what I love about your explanation here, Morgan, is that, um, you know, when folks come into our office space, you know, this is our safe space. This may be the first experience of a space they've been in where they are seen and heard and, you know, their edges are held. And, um, <clears throat> and so then you start them with the narrative that's known and familiar to them. And for so many folks who are clenched in the story disorder, you know, that's the closest thing to a safe space is the story that's familiar. And then, you know, we start our slide in, you know, you and your way and me and mine and, and, oh, what I can, next thing you know, they're knocking on your door and starting to breathe. And then, oh, I'm landed in here. And so what a beautiful, um, what a beautiful agreement, okay, that you meet them where they're at and, and like breathe them, show them the different way so that they almost slide in unsuspecting. Because if you said, we're going to relax now, you know what cortical overlords would do. <laughs> bearing down and clenching. That's and right. Then the back loop of anxiety. Right. And then what are we getting done here? You know, not much. So, um, so that's a, a, a beautiful, important part of the pattern to understand um, that we need to be seen and heard and held, but we also need our safe space. We need that container that's known. And, you know, when I start working with the, um, with teaching folks how to do this focused belly breath stuff for themselves. We always start with create your nook, create your quiet corner. You know, this, this theory of our environment of the space we inhabit and breathe in is so critical. So yay, that, you know, you get it, you met them where they're at and you get it from the inside out now. Yeah. Any, any, any other, it's, any no, it's really what, sorry, anything else about, I'm you sorry. know, the, oh, you anything broke up a else little bit. about, hey. yeah. Anything else about the meeting them where they're at and holding that space for the transformation to begin? Oh, I don't hear you. Okay. So hopefully we will get, uh, online here. <laughs> Tell me when you're oh, back. Absolutely. Morgan. Absolutely. I mean, Okay, um, so what we're going to explore today is the different absolutely. pieces. Absolutely, absolutely. It's funny, you know. What, what comes? What comes okay, I'm you sorry. know what? What we're going to do, Morgan? We're going to take a quick break here, and uh, then we'll come back to discuss more of the pause in this process. So, Dr. Kathy Hallway here your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. 
Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And we are here today with Morgan Born Aves, a local mental health counselor and a colleague of mine. Mm -hmm. And today we're here to talk about the story transformation process because you know, stories bring their own trauma, they bring their clench. And how do we how do we breathe under that and start finding the truth? And you know, we know now that it starts with the deep belly breath that you let yourself feel. And the language we've evolved for that is the power of the pause. And so the first thing that we do is give ourselves permission to explore this power of the pause in our familiar nook, in our where we know we're secure. Um, and then as we move out into the world with the pause, we uh, start to notice maybe some triggers. We start to notice triggers that, that might not be physical events, but uh, old story events. So um there's an invitation that as we get deeper in our breath we can pause and not have to react to what's been so unknown to us so morgan what's been your experience with helping guide people into their pause you know it's it's so funny and it's wild that People come in and the first thing is they want to know why. Why is this happening? Why is their body so uncontrollable? Um, and why does it have almost this separate part of it that acts as its as its um, rule giver? And this is how we coordinate and coexist with the rest of the world. And this is how we react. This is how we defend. And it's amazing. How, it's amazing how I had somebody yesterday, a young guy, seventeen year old kid, and his mom in here. And he has no idea why he's become depressed over the last couple of years. And, you know, like we talk about, depression doesn't start with depression. Depression starts with anxiety. It starts with the clench. Mm -hmm. It's, it's yeah. the gut being able to produce happy neurotransmitters. And there's a feedback loop in the environment of uh, an ex-boyfriend of the mother's who's come back in who is reactive to the child being a child, putting the dishes away, playing his video games because that person has had their own trauma where their sensory system is knocked offline a little bit too mm -hmm. much stimulus too much auditory visual stimulus just causes him to react to the child existing and organizing in his own container and so oh. now the child in his cataloging of behavior this is how i coexist with the rest of the world goes i can't naturally behave and i can't put the dishes away and i can't thrive in my own environment without a reaction from somebody else yeah who has coexisted and learned in a different container. And so now the child wants to hide and retreat and become, you know, the, the early stages of some dissociation and, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what the clinical folks like to say is this like infancy of agoraphobia. And this is a strategy yeah. that's learned to be able to stay safe away from it. And so this gets compartmentalized in the autonomics and <laughs> the catalogs and sees the rest of the world from perspective. Boom, right. gone, offline. <laughs> right. And, you know, that brings up an interesting question, Morgan, of um, in our uh, young childhood trauma patterning, okay, <laughs> in our trauma patterning, we, we are used to, we withdraw mm -hmm. to protect, okay, and, but we're no less clenched when we withdraw to protect, all right? We clench a little harder and put that edge up a little harder. And so how do we help our folks kind of start to slide in, kind of soften in to feel how the pause of feeling a breath is, um, is not that withdrawal clench that's kind of dissociative and disembodied. And 
isn't this part of how using our warm tummy buddies or, you know, a little warm weight on the belly, um, we kind of come in from the side, right? <laughs> we don't name it. This will help you breathe better. It's like, look, just sit with this warm thing here and we'll just sit for a minute, okay? Right, yes. in the first look, of, why is that going to help me? And as soon as it lands on their belly, they're they're gone. They're in another dimension. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an interesting pattern that's emerging in our conversation today about, wow, the pause is not the old withdraw and clench. The pause is feeling that belly breath. And not only is it facilitated by, you know, something warm and snuggly on your belly, um, which feeds right into some of the wiring issues that we were talking about last week. But um, it also speaks to uh, your state of your state of breathing and softness and focus within yourself and accepting them, holding them where they are. So your resonance from your parasympathetic power zone um, is resonating, vibrating, it's holding them too. So it's almost like, oh, here's your hot thing, you know, oh, the breath and then your breath's like, hi, nice to see you here today, you know, and then it proceeds maybe in a little different way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I remember when I was learning about uh, the concept of mirror neurons and things like that. And uh, when you really, when you feel safe with somebody, you start to mimic their nuances, their little characteristics, mm -hmm. their agitations, you know, whatever it is. And I know sometimes people use that for good and sometimes people don't use it for s such good. And it's a little more, more in a, a malicious kind of spectrum. But I do notice then when, that when, when people are in here and the feedback loop of what they've experienced in the past is broken by being in a container that is mm -hmm. soft and yep. with the breath and the sympathetics, then inherently they just slide right into it. And yep. it's a completely different person, completely different story than who they were on the other side of the door. Uh, isn't it amazing? It is so beautiful. And, and how about, I know what I see so commonly with folks, and, and I'm wondering if you see it too, is, you know, come the end of a session and what I'm getting off the table, hang on, hang on. I'm still here. Here I am. I'm still here. And wow, if this is the space that we can hold and the permission that we can hold for that landing, um, that's that's really so powerful and so important you know it's like we're in our presence modeling that they can be present too yeah. it's it's an incredible uh transaction between two people where when you see them come up you see that there is there's no ticker tape of anxiety there's no preconception there's no worry they're kind of somewhere in the between places mm -hmm. and uh, everything is in such a wonderful new frame of reference, I think, for their autonomics, for their nervous system as a whole. It's so different. Like, you know, the stressors can't possibly bombard the person when they're at that point. And I love that that is that frame of reference where somebody can go yeah. back to it with the belly breath. Right, right. It's, it's so unique and powerful and important. And uh, wow, what a great start to our story process here today. And um, we are going to take a little break. And while we're on break, go ahead and slide in with your breathing. And uh, we'll come back and learn more about pause, pivot, reframe. So Dr. Kathy here, your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality? But it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating. Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, 
belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And we're here today with Morgan Born Aves. And we're talking about the story process and sliding into a healthier story pattern within yourself to relieve that clench. So, Morgan, welcome back. Yeah. And <laughs> there you are. Um, so yes, holding the safe space and, uh, starting to, um, starting to feel, feel the breath of the pause within us. That's the, that's where we've been. And there's a step beyond that, of course, um, in our story transformation process, we start with the power of the pause. And as we notice, you don't name it directly, you kind of slide in from the side and you model the breath for them. And over time, that familiarity uh, lets us slide in and feel our stories differently. And, you know, we talk about, well, the pause leads to the pivot. And really the pivot is the first pivot is your attention within your attention to your breath and yourself and this is what we do we support that process of you learning to slide in and pivot to what's present in you and how um and what evolves from there so what if, what have you noticed in your practice about holding that space for your clients to learn that part of the landing process um well, the way that i like to really bring it into awareness for people is that when somebody is motioning towards making a decision about something mm -hmm. if they're making a decision in a state of tension in a state of anxiety, in a state of stress, in a state of I'm uncertain about this, then usually they're making a decision based on something that they've experienced in the past, whether we want to call it, you know, trauma, disorganization, um, a way for the, the brain that was um, it was tr trying to protect, protect and predict for something that was going to happen. It happened, it was big, there was a lot of energy. And then in that current scenario where they're making that decision, one fiftieth, one one hundredth, one one thousandth of the initial blast to the nervous system that caused the anxiety, be it a bus or being fired or a breakup or whatever it is, um, it the person will reconnect back into that state to some degree. Right. If the right. trauma, you know, sensory wise reminds them of the current issue reminds them of that initial trauma. So I'll say, are you making a decision based out of being in a tense, duress like state? Or are you coming from a place of calm and curious and as if mm -hmm. a novel experience and transaction between you and the, the stimulus, the event, whatever it is. And right. 9.999 repeating times out of 10, the person goes, I'm making the decision based out of duress, based out of a former experience, based out of something that threatened my security and made me go offline with my mm -hmm. breath, perception, and, and everything. So that's really the starting point of awareness mm -hmm. when it comes present and embodied with the breath and staying 
curious, staying in that right state, you know? As yeah. Yeah. And then that, you know, that brings to another depth of importance of um, how we each hold space for the other that, you know, okay, let's not try to battle your cortical overlord stories about the only way you're going to survive is through the clench and the hard defense edge, you know, and, and to be, okay, let's just imagine for this half hour in this space that while you're breathing, you know, what feels right to you? What feels like the true decision for you? And so it, part of this, the pause that leads us into the pivot of paying attention to ourselves, as we'll see, is also leading us to what belief that we could take action for ourselves from our well-being. <laughs> you know? This is mm -hmm. what this is unheard of. So what an intriguing dance of holding the edges and um, and being the breath, modeling the breath and then exploring the little tiny first crinkles of story shift, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's incredible because when you think about what happened to the person in the original container, the container being the family, the household, uh, the normal reaction mm -hmm. to parent to child while the child may have been trying to tell something as innocuous as the truth, you know, and how that was received by the shell. And then you think like when that person's in present, well, is there a, a mimicry of the breath and the diaphragm of the original uh, interaction between parent and child and did that child lose their breath in the moment where the parent was casting a judgment or their truth based on their own organization from their own family onto the child and so it's so interesting how when you have somebody access that breath how everything in their perceptual field shifts and mm -hmm. it, almost like they start painting on their own canvas whereas they've mm -hmm. been trying to this their whole life and somebody just keeps coming in and painting over what they've what they've you know put in place and um there's wow. that's that's beautiful language and yes we've talked about perceptual field and how our autonomics are are organizing to that first before we can get in here and feel what's ours and i love that that idea of like oh from in here i can paint my my picture of truth out there i can breathe it and and be it that way. And um, that's, that's lovely. That is because here's the first experience. And you know, as a therapist myself, um, what I notice is when I'm working with kiddos, especially sometimes in our work, I can tell they know I see them. They know I see them. And um, they're accepting them and they've been seen and heard and held and how critical that is to carry us through the rest of our traumatic container, right? That, okay, I just, oh, that Kathy, she saw me. I know it. Okay, I am here. And that, that mm, landing in, all right, I'll figure this out. Somehow I'll get through. So to be seen, to be heard, to be acknowledged like like we do for others and as we are held as well so getting into some good stuff here thank you so much um we're gonna take a quick break and come back and learn more about that pause pivot reframe dr kathy here on your neurotransformation journey on bold brave tv we'll be right back are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. 
Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBC. BBM Global Network. Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here on your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And we're here today with Morgan Born Aves talking about story transformation process and how important it is to sit and hold and be the breath that invites our clients, our patients in to land in their own breath and their softness, which, you know, lets them be in their pause without being running away. They can be in their pause. Man, that's where the big mischief is. The big magic is getting familiar with sliding into the pause, feeling your belly breath and, oh, here I am, here I am, I'm here. And from I'm here, it's... uh, that's where things get curious, as you've said. That's where things get uh, mischief, okay? The mischief starts to move in. And um, under the clench, as we get curious, as we kind of jumped ahead and started talking about already, it is it is not meant to be a place of emptiness, okay? We can be still and present in our pause, and it's not empty. It's curious it's waiting it's the mystery it's your truth in there and somewhere in there is the permission that we start to feel that we can take action that's right for us and there's a litany that i know you've heard me say over and over (laughs) in the past Oh, I can see now. I used to clench up when this happened because of that old story. And right now, when I breathe soft with this, huh, I can do this a different way. I can be here my way through this. And that's what we call our pause, pivot, reframe. Okay, of coming from our other little litany of breathe it, feel your breath in you, breathe it, feel it, name it. That we can start to name our true narrative of our life. So, yeah, what have you noticed about folks going through this uh, this pause, pivot, reframe? How's their journey through that? The pivot is the most interesting part because in the pivot, I seem to see people take on the most critical person in their life's narrative. So what does that mean? Well, in the pivot, I like to use your narrative, which is thank you for your service, but I don't need your help right now. Right. Down your weapons, you know, it's all good. We can face this from a different kind of place. Mm -hmm. And I love that because it's not looking at the protective factors of what being anxious is or being re-traumatized is as being um, a negative thing, a harmful thing, something that's trying to hurt you, um, coming from a different perception and, and reframe of, of you've been here to find me to keep me vertical, to keep me safe, because you're seeing things that I'm not picking up on that are dangerous. 
and all you're trying to do is keep me again vertical and alive. And seeing it from that non judgmental judgmental standpoint, I think yeah. it's just yeah, feeling that that is an important step in it. Okay, yes, I have always said that we need to honor you know the defense patterns that have helped us survive this far and you know it because what when we honor it that's our very first step it's starting to honor what's true for us right truth is i was in that situation truth is okay i i handled it that way um which will then lead to other truths that we start to acknowledge within ourselves so yes good point about you know um about honoring and respecting the defense patterns that got us here so far and once that is so then who where can that next breath take us yeah yeah like you say deeper into the layers you know just reaching a different layer of of good mischief because i feel like that uh -huh. is the, the we are when we're in that place when it, it is a curious kind of perception of things. It is novel. Everything that we're seeing around us is a new experience. That mm -hmm. we can be yeah. Without the access of that breath into our life, it's where is that just doesn't come out of thin air. <laughs> and I think there's another important piece to this patterning, Morgan, which, as we know, as we help folks through layers and layers of a lifetime of trauma, okay, <laughs> you know, you sink in slowly. So you get, you know, you get one tendril of like, oh, I can be present to this now within me without the old triggers and reactions. And okay, yeah, chill, awesome, am I done yet, you know? And then <laughs> kaboom, here comes the next deeper root, the next deeper tendril of an, of an older clench pattern. And like, oh, this again, what? Um, but it's different, all right? Because for every breath of self that you reclaim in choosing to respond in the reframe, um, is a strength that then serves you to meet the next layer, the next, you know, clench. And we, it, it, it's so fascinating that we learn our clench dynamics differently and we learn to resolve them from the breath and the power of that pause and being present. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that is just such a little hack what i love about it is it's it's self-sustaining mm -hmm. this isn't it's not a pill it's not you know it's not it's something that already exists within that's the point it is it is the something portion. yep something that already exists within you your truth right your true breath it's in there you said yeah i'll take that ride okay from that true breath of self in you. So um, yeah, uh, beautiful, beautiful acknowledgement of the dynamic process, you know, and this is also what I think is important for us to guide our patients and clients through is the dynamics of it. You know, it's not a one and done. <laughs> no, no. And thank God it's not. Yeah, like if we can unlearn our patterns that helped us survive, then how would we truly survive if we needed to? Or we just say, no, right. that one doesn't work. And, but maybe there was a scenario in which it was really uh, effective and it caused you mm -hmm. to stay vertical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And now, okay, now let's find a better, find a better way. So, well, we are just moving right along here and I have more to say about that. So we are going to uh, take one more break here to do our breathing. And uh, Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV, slide on in, find some breath, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? 
Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here on your neurotransformation journey. And uh, we're on Bold Brave TV. And today our guest is Morgan Bourne Aves. And we've been having quite the conversation about story transformation process. And um, Morgan, as we head into this section, I think we've naturally been leading into it about learning the resilience of our responsive presence. And for, you know, the 99.9% of the world that's grown up in the clench, okay, <laughs> this is big learning for all of us. And, um, you know, yes, there are surprises waiting for us in the soft breath of our presence. And one is the relief of feeling, oh, here I am, I'm still here. Okay, the relief of that. And that um, from there, what uh, things get smoother. I'm not sure what's happening here, but things get smoother. And that's where we come to realize how exhausting our stress reactionary pattern has been. Just how exhausting. So, um, you know, our stress drive takes a lot of our internal energy. And as we start breathing and sliding in, what, um, oh, okay. I can be in myself and move through my life with more ease. So how does, uh, how does that work out there in your room in the world? What have you noticed? Um, well, I could, I could comment. The first thing that comes to mind is when I think of chronic Mm -hmm. And I think of defense patterns in the body and um, the resiliency of recognizing when the body is going back into that state and it's mm -hmm. aiming to based on something in the environment, looking, feeling familiar to initial shock, initial trauma. And the resiliency factor is, is really brilliant to be a part of because somebody says, um, I went out and I had an argument, for example, or... Uh, um, there was a big shift in the energy in the environment and I didn't clench. My shoulder didn't clench up and the pain didn't radiate down my arm and uh -huh. all these things. And I go, uh -huh. and the answer is always the same. It, it was not uh -huh. like that before. Didn't yeah. do that. You know, I go, well, your, your brain really likes what you're doing for it right now. You may want to continue. <laughs> right. And how amazing to, discover to recognize to recognize okay that in yourself like wow i am really living this process differently where i'm not reacting to the old stuff and in my response what 
I got, I got it. I can giddy up with this. I can do it this way. I can do it my way. You know, the step-by-step -step of learning the response of your resilient responsiveness takes you so leg deep into your presence and your truth. There you are. Mm -hmm. And things get easier and more fun and more curious all at once. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's boundless. Yeah. And when you speak of chronic pain stuff, which is what we talked about last week, um, we say, you know, under the clench, under the clench is your coherence. And I think that's a good word to consider too, because when you can feel that breath, oh yeah, I got legs and I got a belly I'm breathing in and oh, and now my jaw can relax a little. And then, oh, my brain, it doesn't have to be clenched about whether it's safe for me to breathe here or not. And, huh, oh, I can be curious. I can be creative. Wait, what? It's where in me? Yeah. So um, that, that from chronic pain to coherence, from, you know, clench to curiosity, uh, all the, the curious good things about sliding in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's interesting. You mentioned, you mentioned the jaw and, and I see these different kind of like this feedback loop of the body with people sometimes where they don't understand why their fists are clenching or why their jaws are clenching mm -hmm. different areas of the body primitive that are saying, well, if, if you're telling us you're in danger, well, what we're going to do is we're going to bear down on your jaw and flare them wider. Mm -hmm. So you look posing, you know, we're doing our job. And yep. then that just, muscle memory is just so real it becomes the autom autonomic um, <laughs> i guess <fear> <laughs> and, and branding and imprinting where uh -huh. oh, here we are it's here now yeah. do, you, do you feel safe at least you feel a little safer when you're bearing down uh-huh he, and here you 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 bring that up and it it makes me think of something about how standing in our truth and breathing in our truth Okay, there's that third eye. <laughs> there's the like, you know, truth stands on its own, baby. And, you know, you don't need um, a clench. You don't need a bark. You don't need to, um, you know, you don't need a gnarly edge like that. Truth is bigger than any old gnarly defense edge you've created in the past. And I know that I remember my daughter used to say, man, I know, mom, when you go into that quiet place and you're talking to me like that, Okay, mm -hmm. truth like that. I know I'm in the biggest trouble ever. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> okay, because yeah. Okay, it's not the yelling. It's not the banging around. It's the um. It's the the no. We're present. We're present in truth. Okay, and the truth in me is speaking to the truth in you. And okay, now now how's this gonna go? What's possible now? That's our other favorite litany. What's possible now from right here? Okay. And man, I think that's a, that's a powerful invitation. You know, part of this is in our work, we're inviting folks to slide on in, be here in your true blissful mischief and, um, and see what's possible now. What emerges to invite you forward when you're in that place of truth in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the goals that people want to accomplish just become exponential. You know, oh, I didn't know that I could access this layer of myself. Well, what do I want to, I want to do with uh -huh. this curiosity? What does what my, you know, my, my intelligence look like now? What does my safety in, intuitively feel like now? What mm -hmm. can I, you know, like you say, good mischief. What can I come up with when I'm in this kind of really happy rhythmic flow within the body? And it's just the brilliance that I've seen. People just, I've seen where people just immediately, they're in this state where they've been calm for X amount of time and they go, I wanna, I wanna move and put myself in a different situation and do something fun. And I wanna do something exciting where I'm challenged. And they do it. They go, I'm moving. I, I've always wanted to. <laughs> well, there you Beautiful. Are. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. It, what an amazing journey. And you know, we're gonna, we're gonna take one more break now and uh, and then come back and put it all together, this amazing neurotransformation journey. Dr. Kathy here on Bold Brave TV, and we'll be right back. Thank you. 
Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Dr. RC will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live to Dare to Soar, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network, and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And we're here today with Morgan Bourne Aves, mental health counselor. And uh, we've been on quite the story transformation journey here <clears throat> um, and exploring, you know, what it's like to like know this for ourselves and then bear witness and guide others through their process as well. And um, in uh, this last few minutes here we've got together, I just want to bring up one more important thing that is emerging more and more often as really critical. And that is um, as we make our embodied journey, our landing through pause and pivot and reframe, um, and what is it really all about? It's all about receiving and learning within ourselves what I can receive this soft breath of joy within me, what I can, I can, that the root of our needing to be seen and heard and held and received is to let ourselves receive the support we deserve and receive the joy of our lives that we came here to be in. So um, what happens in our life when we start to land there more often and let ourselves receive. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> talk about a dynamic balance. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> is, it is such an incredible unearthing and re-earthing process. Um, it's, it's like digging up uh, your own skeleton and then reburying it in a sense. Oh, wow. Uh, a place that's more, um, I guess, relieving congruent, you know, to what was always meant, you know, um, I really feel like that place of reception is, I don't know if I want to say demand, but I feel like interpersonally between partners and in relationships and things like that, it demands the need to be seen by the other person yes. where the other person was running off of seeing their person, their person by the way that the person was initially seen by their parent was okay until they realized that, hey, no, I need to be seen for what's underneath all the protective layers, the truth right. and the curiosity. Yep. And that's a fun little dynamic balance that, that shows up that I've seen. Yeah. And that's, uh, isn't that a revelation of letting yourself be in your soft place, your soft place of truth? 
to receive and be received, to be connected. Ooh, what? I connect with my partner in that soft place of truth. And wow, breathing here together is bliss, right? Mm -hmm. And oh, isn't that all what we're hoping for in the landing in ourselves? And as we know it securely in ourselves, we can be present to it with our our other. So what a beautiful journey. Morgan, thank you so much for for being with us today, for taking this exploration. And thank yeah. you so much for for being the work, you know, for engaging the work in your own way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've taken this on, on myself. I'm my own, you know, uh, Bunsen Beaker set and I've applied it, you know, in, in every minute of the day to see, is this real? Is this really real? And yep. coming out, you know, out of the ether into new ether, fun, curious, yep. has been good journey of a lifetime. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And folks, I will have information on how to connect with Morgan um, on my website, all right, where these all these episodes are chronicled. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey. And uh, we'll see you next week on Bold Brave TV for another fun exploration. Thank you. You've been watching Neurotransmission Journey with your host, Dr. Kathy Hallway. Tune in each week as Dr. Kathy will introduce a common challenge and outline basic resolution strategies. Tuesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, here on Bold Brave TV.